Before you speak, know that in Sparta, everyone, even a king's messenger, is held accountable for the words of his voice. Now, what message do you bring? In book six of his Metaphysics, Aristotle distinguishes between natural science or physics, which is theoretical and deals with what is inseparable from matter, and that, quote, first philosophy, as he calls it, which is prior to all the rest, is not confined to matter and embraces what is universal. This science, he says, is, of all things, theology, which pertains to, quote, so much of the divine as appears to us. Think I'm going to keep this PC, you're sadly mistaken. This time you'll be truly offended. Don't listen to him, he's not telling the truth. Good in this day and age, we're in a weird era where it's like a philosophy age, mm -hmm. like Socrates sitting here philosophizing. Socrates and the young student, nice in this case Chirophon, have been wondering what it is that Gorgias does. And Socrates tells oh, yeah, Chirophon, ask Gorgias who he is. It doesn't matter. The question of personal identity, being a self, is constructed in language. When you destroy language, you destroy your personality, you destroy yourself. So it's a highly loaded question. It's an explosive question to lead off with. To have your student ask the great sophist, who are you? Devastating question. Chris and clear, not attempting to duplicate, but to complement it and to enhance it. And as he does at the beginning, puts in a statement about his purpose, his purpose of morally improving the And he says that we should use our ability to learn to study worthwhile No one cared who I was till I put on the mask. There's this idea in Jungian psychology called the circumambulation. Jung had this idea that you had a potential to yourself. In potential, everything that you could be. And that it manifests itself moment to moment in your present you know, by making you interested. In I don't want there to be any hard feelings. And when the things you that you're interested in uh, are the things that would guide you along the path and lead you to maximum development. Now, it sounds like a metaphysical idea or a, or a mystical idea, but it's not. It's, it's not. It's a really profoundly biological idea. The idea is something like, well, you're set up so that you're automatically interested in expand you as a well-adapted creature. Nothing radical about that idea. How else? What else could possibly be the case unless there's something fundamentally flawed about it? That is what the situation. Is. It's kind of interesting to think about how that would be manifest moment to moment. But the idea is something like your interest is captured by those things that lead you down the path of development. Okay, so that's fine. So there's some utility in pursuing those things that are interesting. That's the call to adventure. Now, the problem with the call to attention is, like, what the hell do you know? You might be interested in things that are kind of warped and bent. And often it's the case that new parts of people manifest themselves and grip their interests, say. They do it very badly and shoddily. And so you stumble around like an idiot trying to do something new. That's why the fool is the precursor and the savior from the symbolic you have to be a fool before you can be a master. And if you're not willing to be a fool, then you can't be a master. So, so you're going it's, to, it's an error, <clears throat> error ridden process. And that's also laid out in the Old Testament me. stories because the first thing that happens to all these patriarchal figures when God kicks them out of their father's house when they're like 84 is that they, they run into all sorts of trouble. And some of it's social and some of it's natural and some of it's a consequence of their own moral inadequacy. So they're fools. But the thing that's so interesting is that despite the fact that they're fools, they're still supposed to go on the adventure. And that they're capable of learning enough as a consequence of moving forward on the adventure so that they straighten themselves out across time. And so it's something like this, this circumambulation that we talk about is this continual, this continual circling in some sense of who you could be. You might notice, for example, that there are themes in your life when you go back across your experiences, you see, you kind of have your typical experience that sort of repeats itself, and there might be variation on it, like a musical theme, but it's, it's like you're, you're circling yourself and getting closer to yourself as you move across time. That's the circumambulation. Now, 
remember that for a second. Go back. Okay, so imagine that something glimmers before you. It's a, an interest that's dawning, and you decide, well, first of all, you're paralyzed. You think, well, how do I know if I should pursue that? It's probably a stupid idea. And the proper response to that is, you're right, it probably is a stupid idea, because almost all, the, all ideas are stupid. And so the, the probability that as you move forward on your adventure that you're going to get it right the first time is zero. It's just not going to happen. And so then you might think, well, maybe I'll just wait around until I get the right idea, and which people do, right? So they're like 40-year-old, 13-year-olds, which is not a good idea. So they wait around until it's waiting for Godot, until they finally got it right. But the problem is you're too stupid to know when you've got it right. So waiting around isn't going to help. Moses went to the mountain and God spoke up. Because even if it, the perfect opportunity manifested Moses, itself in, you, in your incomplete the form, God, the probability that you would recognize you it as the perfect opportunity is zero. You, you might even me? think it's the worst yes. possible idea that you've ever heard of anywhere. Highly likely. Highly likely. What would you so, have me do for you? So you have, there's, I shall Nietzsche, give Nietzsche you called that a will, will to stupidity, which I really like. So, because he thought yes. of stupidity as being a, you have to take it into account fundamentally and work with it. Lot. So, so you can take these tentative steps on your pathway to destiny and you can assume that you're going to do it badly. And that's really useful because you don't have to beat yourself up. It's pretty easy to do it badly. But the thing is, it's way better to do it badly than not to do it at all. And that's the continual message that echoes through these historical stories of Genesis. It's like, these are flawed people. They, they should have got the hell out of their house way before they did. Um, and they go out and they stumble around in tyranny and famine and self-betrayal and, and violence. And, but it's a hell of a lot better than just rotting away at home. That's, that's great. So that's good. One so why is that? Well, okay, so you, you start your path and you think that you're heading you know, towards your star. Please, we must talk. So this may be our last the supper. Then, because you're here, the world looks a particular way, but then when you move here, the world looks different, and you're different as a consequence of having Ooh. made that voyage. So what that means is that now that thing that glimmers in front of you is going to have shifted its location because you weren't very good at specifying it to begin with and now that you're sharper and more focused than you were it's my first it's, order. it's going to reveal itself with more accuracy yes. to you. Why? And so then what? you have to take that what? Yes. It's almost like 180 degrees reversal. Oh, yes. But what? It isn't because you know you it's what you said. What? What? I mean you've gone this far and that's a long ways to get that far. But that's a lot farther than you would be if you just stayed where you were, waiting. And so it doesn't matter that you overshoot continually. Because as you overshoot, even if you don't learn what you should have done, you're going to continually learn what you shouldn't keep doing. And if you learn enough about what you shouldn't keep doing, then that's tantamount at some point to learning at the same time what you should be doing. So, it's okay. So it's like this. Now, what's cool about it though, I think, is that ah, as you progress, the degree of no. overshooting starts to decline. It's all right. We, that, we know that. Portrait. There's nothing hypothetical about that. Ah. As you learn a new skill, like even to play, play a song on the piano, for example, you overshoot madly. You make all sorts of mistakes to begin with, and then the mistakes... Yeah, fair now, but this is no good. All I've got is a box. Everybody want to be in the picture? Get up and go to the other side of the table. Come on.